I think of this show really as a testimony to all those people who hear music in their heads and can't make it. Uh, and most of those people are told by their grade school teachers to just move their lips when the other children are singing. And Florence Foster Jenkins did not choose to do that. Fortunately, she came into enough money, but, uh, thanks to the death of her parents, she came into enough money so that she could live out her dream of being an opera singer. And uh, this Fantasia uh, looks at what she did, looks at the, at the accompanist who was faithful to her for 12 years and supportive of her, and tries to answer, I think, the question that, that uh, Cosme, the accompanist, asked. Why did she do it? Why did I? Um, she did it because she had to, and it made her happy. And he did it because he learned to respect that in her and finally learned to admire that in her. Uh, how much of a challenge is it to sing badly? Or to, uh... <laughs> well, on some days it's not <laughs> such a challenge, but I guess the thing that was the biggest challenge was to try to be true to what she really sounded like, because you can go on YouTube and kind of hear what she sounded like, without it being kind of a caricature, because you don't want it to be literally and figuratively like a one-note performance. Greg and I worked together initially. That was the first thing we started to work on was the music and figure out, well, wh what would she sound like? Would her voice kind of be reedy or was she just determined she was going to stick with that note and just hammer it home? So we explored it a little bit as we were, as I was learning the music with Greg. And then as I got a little more comfortable with the music and heard what it was supposed to sound like, then I would kind of figure out where I was going to maybe go off a little bit or try to be a little bit under. But in a word, it was a challenge. And whatever happens on a particular night kind of happens. So I don't think it's ever quite the same. Well, as, as a music director in local theater, I, I hear a lot of Florences from time to time. And I think from that experience alone, I can empathize with Cosme and really understand the kind of, of quality that he was yearning for. But then also looking at the person behind Florence, seeing what a good person she was, and her sincerity and her in, intense desire to, um, to produce beautiful music. And I think that in and of itself was a beautiful thing. And so Cosme, although conflicted, certainly saw the beauty in it. And I'd like to think that I can embellish or embody some of that because I strive to do that as well in, in my experiences with uh, local theater and local musicals and especially in this production with, with Priscilla and, and trying to make her shine in, in, in her role. I've read a lot of things, a lot of comments by people who knew her or by people who talked to people who knew her and all of them say that she was eminently happy, that she did what she wanted to do and she was happy in it. Uh, yes, she seemed to be making herself re regularly ridiculous, but there was something admirable in, in that just the same. There are people who, who pretty much told her you really shouldn't be singing and that you, you know that that's probably what happened during her childhood as she was coming up, but yet, she overcame those obstacles and then when she finally came into her own financial resources she could make it happen and you do kind of wonder i mean were her friends really her friends i mean what 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 do people do when they support you in an artistic endeavor it's not easy to keep a straight face on stage let me tell you that some of my reactions during her singing are sincere i can't help but twinge my eye and move my cheek just a little bit when those notes aren't quite right. Uh, the audiences uh, they uh, tend to begin quiet and then they laugh more and more. The next to the last piece they roar right along with the Carnegie Hall audience and then they just 
are blown away by the ending, just as all of us are. I mean, we, <laughs> we used to tear up at rehearsals, and the audience is too. They're, they're, the play, the actors have communicated that message the, that is so moving and so touching. In terms of what I'd love for people to take away is that they, they kind of have an insight into how this one woman approached her art and how she was fiercely committed to it and that that made the difference and it was the voice she heard in her head and I think all of us have to listen to that voice whether it's still and small at some point or it's quite loud and maybe a little bit off key but I think we have to listen to that and be guided by it and be committed to it. I think that's what I love about her. Uh, Stephen Temperley in, in writing the show I think caught the essence of it which is that Music is in the ear of the beholder, and um, I hope the audience would come and behold the show in the way that it was meant to be heard, which is to hear the joy in all of it, even though it may sound off-key and painful at times. It's a really a joyful story. Mm -hmm.